back everyone to close to broke my name is karen today we are at the gun range poker will be happening eventually we got the private game big game going on today 5 10 20 no cap but for now shooting some guns let's enjoy ourselves here at angela's crest As things here in California start to brighten up, the sun is out and we're here to have some fun. After a very long day of activities, we find ourselves stumbling in half asleep, literally on two and a half hours of sleep, to come into a private game session that's already full underway. The swings are already getting big. Joining here late, we're already into this game for about $2,000, and we've already got some poker hands to go over, so let's do it. In this very first hand of note, the $20 straddle is on. Under the gun makes it 60. Next hack, three bets to 275. The action folded back to me here in the straddle. I looked down at ace queen off. This is a pretty easy spot to just go ahead and fold here. Cold calling is an absolute disaster. I think the only thing that I can do here outside of folding is raising. Like I said, I feel like just flatting the three bet is lighting money on fire. I'm going to be out of position for the entirety of the hand, and it's just hard to really know where you're at. If I throw in the old four ball here, I make it $700 to go here, turning our ace queen into a bluff. Luckily for us, under the gun folds, which is good. Now we're onto the three better who snap folds. Well, look at that. Okay. Well, luckily for us, we end up getting through it there, picking off some timely spots, and things are hopefully going in our way. At this point, the action is getting out of hand. The $40 double straddle is now pretty much a staple for most of the session. And in this foddling hand, it is no different. The big blind decides to raise to 160 after it folds to him. And the action is now onto me here in the double straddle. We looked down at Queen 10 offsuit. Seems like an easy spot for us to just go ahead and call. We're going off to a flop here that comes Ace, King, at 9, Rainbow. There's actually two clubs out there, so not Rainbow, unfortunately. But... At this point, our opponent decides to throw a C bet of $100, going about a third of the size of the pot or just shy of that. Well, to be quite honest, I don't have all that great of board coverage here. Sure, I'm going to have a lot of, you know, top pairs or, you know, some two pairs like Ace-9 and King-9. But for the most part, I just don't have a lot of board coverage. My opponent here as the initial raiser will definitely have all the Aces, Kings, and Nines. Granted, I think I can have Nines sometimes, but Aces, Kings, Ace, King, all going to be definitely three betting here pre-flop so in real time i think it's the best to raise here and turn my gutter ball into a bluff considering i do have a club here at least we can rep that if we need to and it's a pretty decent one at that so in real time i raised to 425 but in hindsight i just don't like this bluff all that much i actually don't think that it'd be a bad idea to just like i said just call the flop here and either check or excuse me raise the turn or take over the betting lead on the turn kind of hard to rep a lot here but luckily for us our opponent ends up folding so try not to be too results oriented here again i think we get all of our opponent's air balls to just snap fold like queen highs and jack highs and six seven suited those type of holdings but all in all i just don't have a whole lot of board coverage here probably would have played best if i raise it on the turn of the river but here we go once again we've got fireworks going on pre-flop when early position raises to 75, the next act player flat calls, and the action's folded over to the big blind. At this point, Mr. K. Lou decides to 3-bet it up to a large sizing here of 425. We definitely like that. Gotta punish all of these razors out of position. And with the action on me here in the straddle, we look down at quite the sight to see Ace, King, Big Slick. Well, uh, don't really know what to do here all that perfectly. To be quite honest here... I am going to be the second biggest stack in this hand, and the only person that I'm effective against is going to be the big blind, who's playing about four or $5,000. Everyone else in this hand will have slightly less than me, somewhere in the ballpark of 2 I'm sitting about $2,800. I think that four betting here is obviously needs to happen, but the sizing, I think, is a little bit of troublesome for me. I think in real time, I'm just preoccupied with the idea of the SPR, if I make it like 1200, if I make it a thousand, like I'm leaving myself 1800 behind, is that even one to one? But I think honestly, it just works best. 
And to be quite honest, and to give myself a little bit of leniency, I miscounted my stack in real time. I thought I had somewhere in the neighborhood of like 22 to 2300, at most 2500. And yeah, I mean, I'm only human. I miscounted pretty severely here. And like I said, I'm sitting on about 2800. So when I go all in, it's a little bigger than I was anticipating. But even then, the chips are in the middle. If I can get my opponents to fold some type of equity, like jacks or queens even possibly, tens, nines, eights, all these hands we want to get out of there as we are behind those hands. All that to be said, when the actions fold it down to the big blind, he thinks about it for quite some time and asking if I think he's going to make a set. In these spots, traditionally speaking, you know, I don't mind chatting it up and having fun, but at these stakes with the $40 big blind being on quite often, I just want to keep my lips sealed, want to take myself seriously as I can here and not allow myself to get, you know, I don't know, give away anything I need to give away. All that being said, luckily for us, our opponent ends up making the fold. So looks like all is well. That ends well. To this point, none of the hands really going to showdown. But luckily, we've got some more poker to go over. But in this next hand, I'm under the gun. I look down at King Queen. I go and race to 100. The action folds all the way to the double straddle here. As we mentioned, $40 is out there now. And he decides to make the call. The flop comes out jack 4-3 with two spades. The action folding over to me, considering I do have a spade, it feels like a decent spot to see bet. And if we can pick up some more equity or get some advantageous cards on the turn, I think a double barrel will be in order. I down bet to 85 and my opponent calls. Definitely can still be wide. And when the turn card comes out, the three of hearts and he checks to me. Unfortunately, because of board pairs here, and I don't think my opponents are ever going to be folding sevens or eights in this spot here. Obviously not a jack. I just go and check it back and take my free card. The river is a really great one as it comes to king of clubs. My opponent decides to lead out for 225, which is slightly odd. And then I go into the think tank for a second. I'm trying to figure out if there's any merit in raising ever here. Can I ever get called by worse? Sure, there's some hands that contain threes as well as king jacks out there. But I think there's a small chance that my opponent can call me off with a weaker holding. I don't block a hand like king 10 of spades. I don't block a hand like jack 10. And I think those hands will at least consider calling this river sometimes. The only problem is I just don't think a jack leads out this river ever, especially not for the sizing. So I'm pretty much targeting only a king here. And we have the second best king created. And effectively, the best one here is I'd assume that this opponent would be three betting ace king. So I raise it up to 575. Unfortunately for us, our opponent snap folds and shows 8-5 for a good float there uh, as he had double back doors. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I went a little too thin for that raise there on the river, but I don't know. In real time, it felt like a good idea. Moving along fairly quickly, there's a $40 straddle out there. Early position makes it 120. The cutoff calls. Action's on me here in the big blind, and we look down at Ace Queen once again. A ton of premiums today makes poker to play fairly easy, especially when you're hitting the flops. I go ahead and three bed here to a massive sizing of 500. It's really not that massive, pretty normal sizing here. But again, we're looking to either get this heads up. We would dare not want to go three ways to a flop here this bloated. So I've got to make it a little, little, little bit more. With the early position razor folding here, the cutoff decides to call, as we like to call that, the old double cream. And we're going off to a flop here that comes out king 10-3 with all clubs. We do, in fact, have the ace of clubs, which is great. So I decide to just start a down bet here for 275. Going about 25% of the pot here, 20% of the pot seems like a good idea for many reasons. Mostly because when I down bet small here on the flop, no matter if the turn card is a club or not, I do have the nut blocker. I can go massive here on the turn. Any jack probably gives me the best hand. Any club gives me the pretty much nuts here. And then, you know, obviously we still have an ace over card. I'm sizing up or sizing down, I should say, to size up for the turn. To go for a pot size turn bed or something in the ballpark of that. But it won't come to it as my opponent pretty quickly makes the fold. To this point, it's been a whole lot of value. A whole lot of easy play, if I'm being quite fair. And this next hand's no different. The straddle is going to be off in this hand. I just raised to 50 as there is only the $20 single straddle out. Next to act calls, a small blind and a straddler call. We're going off to a flop, only out of position to one player. That comes queen, nine, four. Flopping top pair here with king, queen. With the action checked over to me, there's about $200 out there. And I'm kind of in an interesting situation where 
I mean, I'm four ways, four ways to a flop. I do flop top pair. It's semi-coordinated here. It's hard to ever have a bluff here. I, I don't know how you'd say balance, but I just throw out a bet of 100 going half pot. We can obviously get called by worse hands. That goes without being said. And it seems like at least one person is coming along when the next act player calls and the turn card comes out the five of clubs. At this point, I'm pretty confident I have the best 10. I would have heard from double pairs or two pairs, I should say, and I would have heard from sets. And now I think the only thing left in my opponent's calling range is probably going to be a hand like Queen Jack, Queen 10 or Jack 10 maybe king jack all of those hands needs to get value or i need to get value from those hands so i'm going to size up a bit here i decided to go for a 375 trying to go near the size of the pod here like we said still can get called from a ton of drawing hands and we can obviously deny equity from hands that you know have some equity it's all for naught after our opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call or fold i should say tricked you guys there kept you on your toes Either way, once again, another hand not going to showdown. I'm not sure how conscious you are of things that go on during your entirety of your session, but I think the one thing that I've noticed recently, or at least try to, is that how many times do your hands go to showdown? What do your opponents thinking of you? Like, do you think do you have any good credit? Do people think that you're showing not a bunch of strong hands, so they're going to give you credit for stronger hands? Do you take advantage of that by bluffing a little more often? These are all little things you have to think about in live poker. I haven't shown down a single hand, I don't think, at this point. So, I don't know. My opponents can literally just be in the absolute blue or black, I should say. And I don't know. It's, I'm kind of in a tough spot here where I'm still kind of playing a little under the radar. Not a lot of really massive pots. Just been kind of cruising for the most part. At this point, the action folds to the small blind who decides to raise to 80. I'm in the $20 straddle. We look down at king seven off. Not a great hand, but in position, it's a mandatory call. We've got to defend it here. The flop comes out eight, four, three, rainbow. Definitely a board that I'm going to have significantly better board coverage to. And when the action checks to me, as I'd assume my opponent be doing pretty frequently here, I think we have a pretty easy check back. I think we can definitely bluff on certain turn cards. And the turn card it does come just that. It comes a six of clubs. At this point, our opponent checks once again, and I decide to bomb it here for going over the size of the pot for 200. Our opponent does end up making the call here, and the river card comes the five of diamonds, pretty much giving me the nuts. Obviously, we can still be worried about some other straights that are slightly larger, but I mean, who am I kidding? Nine, seven, if you got it, but I mean, tip your cap off. At this point, we feel like we have the effect of nuts. So when the opponent checks it over to me, I think I make a tad bit of a mistake here. I decide to go for a bet of a two-third sizing for 450. I think in real time, I was just thinking that my opponent's going to have a hard time calling me down with a single pair hand. But I just feel like I, sh I have every opportunity to just go big here. It's, maybe it's a little bit of an exploit move, but we've got a big hand and it's kind of a little bit of a janky board. My opponent's either going to call with like a two pair or like aces or kings or something that he was trapping with, or just fold. Like, it's just that easy. I don't think my opponent's ever, 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 like ever, going to call me with just an eight, like nine, eight. I think that hand's just a pretty easy fold here. So it doesn't matter whether I go like pot size bed or if I go for a smaller sizing. So I think I make a small error here, and it seems like it is. So my opponent pretty quickly throws in the call. We finally put a hand at showdown. Obviously, we were bluffing on the turn, but value betting on the river. So once again, things moving in the right direction. It would have been pretty interesting if I could go in the entirety of a session without going to showdown, but it's all for naught. This hand is probably the main event of the evening. One of the sickest hands we've played in a while. So buckle up and get ready for a fun ride. At this point of the session, like I said, haven't been shown down too much. Been steadily growing my stack little by little by little and we've nearly doubled our stack at this point obviously not playing too many big pots just small pots going in my way and not a whole lot of street bumps things will change rapidly here when the button decides to race to 125 after the 40 dollars straddle and i'm here in the big line with eight seven hearts this is a very easy spot for us to go ahead and three bet against a button open here the amount of dead money in the middle it's an easy spot for me to do it i go to 450 Action folds back to the button, who decides to make the call. We're going heads up off to a flop, and it's a pretty decent one as it comes queen 10-9 with two diamonds and a heart. 
At this point, I'm kind of in between a couple of different situations. Earlier in this in the session, we had a similar spot where there was a early position raise and then a flat and I three bet with ace queen. We flopped ourselves a gutter ball as well as the nut flush draw. Kind of an interesting spot here as we flop ourselves an open ender, granted, to the dummy end of the straight on one end and a backdoor flush draw. We do have great board coverage here as we can have all of the sets, queen tens and nines. We can have all the two pairs, queen 10, queen nine, 10, nine, and we can have all of the big draws and we can have the nuts here. I can easily have king jack suited. All that to be said, I think a down bet here is the one that makes the most sense. Going somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25%. So I go ahead and do just that. I make it 275. At this point, my opponent decides to raise to $900. A little interesting and definitely puts me in a precarious situation. One, because believe it or not, I mean, I'm sure you can believe it. I can be drawing stone dead here, like absolutely super dead. We can already be up against it like a hand like King Jack, or we can be not doing too well against a hand that is like Ace Jack of Diamonds or a pair in a flush draw. You know, there's a lot out there and I won't defend this call, but I go ahead and make the call here. A little spewy, but I mean whatever we're playing we're playing the game right we're taking it to the streets and the turn card comes out the nine of clubs okay not my favorite card here but i will say this i just don't think that my opponent's gonna be betting this turn card ever with anything outside of a boat or like really good boat blockers if that makes sense a good hand to bet this as a bluff probably is like jack 10 maybe but even then, I mean, that, that hand just wants to check it back, I guess, to just realize some equity with that straight draw. So when I check it over to him, like I said, I'm pretty much expecting him to check all of his range back. And luckily for us, he does. So I get to realize some equity. And we're going off to a river card that comes the eight of spades. I'm kind of like in the middle here. Uh, I don't know if I should bluff at this now and get my opponent to hero fold a hand like queen 10 or king queen or ace queen. The, the big question and, and what my brain is trying to wrap its head around, which I barely have a grasp for my brain at this point, but I'm trying to figure out what the heck my opponent can raise a flop with and snap check back the turn. I mean, maybe King Jack sometimes, but it just feels like he might honestly have some random air balls here, like maybe a hand like 10-8 or 10-7. Our opponent's definitely capable of having a wider range here, but... I land on a pretty funny conclusion. Why not throw out a little annoying blocker bet? We made a pair and we can give ourselves a ridiculously cheap price at a bluff. It's kind of a sick one here. Like we can get some queens to fold, some tens to fold. We're obviously never going to get a jack to fold, but hey, I don't have to call or be in a, put in a weird spot against that. And like I said, jacks are just going to call never going to raise king jack is probably going to call maybe they raise if they're able to get that thin but we're only getting raised by obvious boats here and outside of that eh, we give ourselves a shot at the cheap bluff and hey you know me and my peeps we like to get ourselves a deal i don't know i can say that i'm it's cool either way i throw out a bet of 350, a little goofy maybe, but why the hell not? We're in the streets, baby. We're playing poker. My opponent snap folds. <laughs> what the heck? I mean, he could have maybe had an absolute air ball for all I know, but look at us. That can no way in the world be approved by anyone, but it worked. And that's exploitative poker, right? That's what they tell me at least. By this point, the game is looking to be closed out. I'm looking to rack up my chips, half of them already getting in the rack at this point. When we look down at pocket aces under the gun, well, oh, got to play those, got to de definitely play those. So I got raises to 100. The big blind decides to call, and then the straddler decides to 3-bet to 500. With the action on me here, honestly, maybe I'm an idiot, but they always told me you should never play out of the rack. That doesn't mean I'm going to be an absolute dunk and just fold here, but why not make this decision easy and just go all in? What the hell? What the hell not? You know, just go for it. Whatever. This is obviously not good here, but it can't be that bad. I mean, we only have like 120 big blinds, right? And we have aces. Aces, baby. Let's go for it. I go all in for 5,800, and the action folds back to the straddler. Now we've got a little bit of an issue as our straddler 
opponent here goes deep into the tank. Some time goes by and my heart is beating. There's no better feeling in poker than having all of your chips in with the nuts. And at least at this point, I've got the nuts. Aces are the best hand pre-flop. At least, you know, that's what I'd hope they'd be. I'm praying for a call here, as this can easily end up being one of the sickest sessions of my life. And after a bit of thought, our opponent decides on a fold. So thinking the better of it. Luckily for us there, we end up with a positive, And I will definitely pocket that $700 odd dollars there right before the game breaks how can you complain about it all of that to be said very very lucky and thankful that the poker gods have been on my side lately our graph is looking unbelievable as it's just on the way up out of like the last 15 sessions we've only lost like one so things are definitely panning out for the best and hoping and believing that this will continue to prosper and go forward all of that to be said We've got an outro to get to, so it's all over there now. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. Too, too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. Well, things are changing quite rapidly here at the Lucky Lady Casino. I went into the casino and it was just about to get dark, and now I'm leaving the casino. It's late. And it rained. What the fuck? What happened? Good news to report. Don't know how many hands we got. We played for about five hours. We were on believably car dead i know it might not look like it because we had so many premiums in the session but like as far as it pertains to actual poker hands almost everything you guys saw was the hands i played and luckily i had the perfect form of card deadness so we had really big hands when we had it or when we played a hand and when we didn't play a hand luckily had such bad cards we couldn't even put in money you know like the eight seven suited although we got a little frisky with that one just a fun session all in all it was quick got here really late really enjoyed the uh the range in the morning so if you guys want to play in these games today's game was pretty big it was 5 10 20 40 almost so pretty big game if you guys ever want to play like i said you guys can message me or dm me on instagram you guys can obviously always contact me in any other form uh text message there's uh right here yeah so if you guys can't make it to these games with the sunday game which is a 2-3 and a 2-5 game we're getting two tables every single freaking weekend sunday 1 p.m at the lucky lady pretty awesome if i say so myself uh you guys can also play with me on the virtual felt that is at the splash squads and the splash squads only and i play there every week and i've been streaming on sundays sunday nights if you guys have been interested in playing so once i leave the lucky lady i'll go punt it off online works out great either way not a whole lot much more to talk about by this point i'm pretty sure that this video will be going live after my hustler appearance so hopefully i, I can ran good in that and if i didn't i hope it was a good show that's gonna do it for today that i can think of excited for the wsop excited to be on a massive upswing let's freaking go you know they locking up blacks and latinos it's the same old game ain't nothing really changed but the mileage on the meter of the beam you get cold when you ride with the heater it'll turn you to a dog like a keto and expose what cat like a cheetah